Hey there, everyone, and welcome to my official Origins wrap-up video. Right. Yes. Yep. Such uh, a good week. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Such a busy week, too. You know, that's the thing about these conventions, is you get here, and it's like, oh, I got five more days. And it's you know, plenty of time. Then the next day, I got four more days. Right. You start to get homesick, and all of a sudden, boom, you're done. You're done. But... It also feels like we've been here a long time well, in the yeah. same breath, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you and me especially, because yeah. this is actually Monday. Right. Origins ended yesterday. And, and we're still here. We're still <laughs> still here. Yes, and it was it was a fun quest to find a room to film this in. Yeah, that's been a little mini adventure. Yeah, little mini so. I guess we should mention at this point that... Um, Yes. We did find a room in the convention center. But that maybe we shouldn't be in. We snuck in. We, a better way to put it is we snuck into a room. This is true. We <laughs> snuck into a room. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. You helped me out. I did. I sent you out on recon I missions. Did. It was awesome. Yeah. So I, you saw more of the exhibit hall yeah. than I did. In the evenings, I did about every other night. I got a chance to play a couple of games. <laughs> so... Uh, one game I wanted to talk about real quick, I think I mentioned it in another video, so I won't uh, dwell on it too okay. much, is what I think is the surprise hit of the okay. convention. And that is Where Words. Oh, right? Where Bezier yeah, games. absolutely. Um, yeah. Everyone who's played this game has done two things. Mm -hmm. They have compared it to Insider, mm -hmm. and then they said that it replaces Insider oh, for them. Oh, really? I didn't hear that. Yes. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes, because what you have in this, it's, it has the werewolf uh, universe, universe kind of. Yeah. You have uh, you know, the villages, villagers right. and a mayor and one or two werewolves. Right. And the were werewolves are essentially traitors. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have a randomly given, a word that's given randomly to the mayor. You know, kind of a guess the word yep. type of thing. It's, it's essentially 20 questions. Right. And, of course, you know, everyone has a secret role, um, except the mayor. Everyone who knows who the mayor <laughs> is because the mayor has the word. And people are trying to guess the word by doing 20 questions, and the mayor has these tokens with yes and no answers. So someone will say, you know, is it uh, a vegetable? And he'll like yes or no. He'll give them a token. And if you run out of tokens, before the word is guessed, you lose the game. Oh. Now, of course, there are the werewolves who are trying to give out bad clues. Of course. You know, they prevent you from getting Which is it. awesome. Yeah. But twist, the really big twist is that everyone has a role, villager versus werewolf, including the mayor. So the guy who knows the word may be the traitor. traitor. And maybe giving just, he, when he's giving you yes or no responses, may just be lying. Yep. And that right, right there, there is pretty fun. Yeah. I only yeah. got to play it once. Oh, okay. So we, I didn't get to play it a bunch of times. But we, I came in like at the end of people playing. I'm, oh, I'd like to try it, you know. Um, I, uh, I was not the traitor. Regardless of what Randy will always tell you, I was not the traitor. <laughs> <laughs> we we I, we played it one night, but we played like a half a dozen times because it's a four minute game as well. Right. It's you know it's timed because the, it uses yeah. an app. Yep. And, oh, and the app we got to talk about that. It's okay. not Eric. Oh no, voice, it's, not. it's not. It's a British. Yeah, it's a British. Yeah. British yeah. Villagers, open your eyes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I gotta admit, not hearing Eric's voice it was a little weird. It was jarring. It, it was actually jarring was jarring to me. And and. Uh, you know, we had people coming in and coming out of it, and every new player that sat down said, it's not Eric Summer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Was, I have to admit, you know, I don't mind changing stuff, but, man, it was just weird not to hear Eric on the other side of that. It yeah. It was just yeah, odd. Yeah. So, you it was still, it was fun. It was still Again, fun. Other, <laughs> other than that glaring <laughs> flaw. That's right. <laughs> but, um, uh, oh, yes. So we, we played it about a half dozen mm -hmm. times that night. And what I discovered about the game is that uh, we didn't have the mayor himself become a werewolf. Mm. That we didn't have that scenario. However, we had a couple of times where someone who will remain nameless uh -huh. was the mayor and was giving out these clues that really made him seem like he was a werewolf. I also, playing the game, discovered that oh. whittling is not a hobby, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. That's what, what? That's what we all said, too, yes. I'm very surprised by that. So were we. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, what else did you get to play? Um, let's see. Wow. We played Magic Maze, and we played. Oh yes, we played. That was another one I got to play. Yeah, really fun. Oh my gosh! How many know, players? Terrible did... at it. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> How many did you play? It with? Uh, let's see, four, five. Okay, like we, we played for four, with four and five as yep. well. It and, was really fun. And that's the uh, real time. Yep. Uh, you have a maze, and all the players um, have powers. Yes, there. Yes, and there's these pawns mm -hmm. on this basically this mall, and so you know, and it's got like it's like a mall layout. So sometimes you can go north, sometimes you can right. go east and west. It's like a maze. Right. Hence and your characters name. though are set back in like fantasy characters. Yeah, because brought the, into a modern day mall. Yeah, the theme. <laughs> the theme is unique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
But each player can move, you can move any pawn you want. There's like four different colored pawns. And each player can move any pawn they want, but they can only move it in one direction. So I might be able to move them west, and you might be able to move them north. Right. And so the other players will be doing the other direction. So in real time, you're moving each pawn, mm -hmm. and you... It's a, you can't talk. You can't talk yeah. while you're playing it. It's so, it's so, so, oh, this is going to be easy. This is, no, it's not. No, it's not. And, and what, the, you have that pawn, right? Sorry. <laughs> you no, know, that's exactly. <laughs> and then you can put it from somebody. Do your thing, man. That's exactly. <laughs> they include a pawn, right? Specifically for the purpose of going, going. Go. So I see a funny. move you don't yeah. see. You can take it. Yeah, and there's like only one character can do the escalators. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so you got to like, get them oh lined up. Oh my gosh. Up. Yeah. So that one, that one was one where we like we we played it like. This was the stupidest game I've ever played. Yeah. Set it up again. Dude, dude, that's exactly right. Let's go again. Yes. Every game was like that. Oh, I loved it so much. Yeah. I, it's definitely high on my list to get. It's definitely, and it's compact. Yep. It's, it's compact. definitely a convention game. Bring that to every convention. Oh it's gosh. a great group convention game. Or your family. If yes. If you want to stay friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how does that say for, what does that say for staying friends with your family? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh. it's definitely brutal because you're like, would you hurry up and do your move? You know, <laughs> so. Oh, you know the other game that I was excited to get in my hands? What's that? It wasn't on sale here yet, and it's going to be Kickstarter backer soon. Was Tiny Epic Quest. Oh. He brought just a select few, Michael did, and I, I got a copy. I was lucky. The heck you say? <laughs> the heck you say? Yes. The thing that I want to talk about that game real quick uh -huh. is that I can't believe I just um, I can't believe nobody did this before. The meeples hold swords and shields. But they have holes. They've got holes, and they just you plug in the different equipment into the meeple. Wow, that is cool. It's, it's super cool. So are, are the swords and weapons are they plastic? They're plastic, and they just and the meeples are plastic too. But they just okay. plug right into it. It's like, that's just a no-brainer. So as you get the equipment yep. for your characters, you're actually decking out your meeples. Decking out your meeples. <laughs> that's just one of, right there alone is the reason to own it. You know, I just need to do that. I don't even need to play a game. I'm just going to plug in my equipment right on my desk. Yep. Right, so right, right, cool. Go. Today I am a Viking. There yeah. You go. Just so wild. So big thanks to, get, um, to Game of Games for giving me a chance to look at this early. So I'm yeah. super excited. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, wait, wait, wait. Since you mentioned Game of Games, mm -hmm. the, their booth was to the right across oh, right, the hall from Passport. So I got yep. to stare at their big sign for Heroes of Land, Sea, and Air. Mm -hmm. So they didn't you know, have it or anything that I saw, but I went up and I asked them about yeah, it because yeah. they, they had some issues with their Kickstarter. They had to restart their Kickstarter yes, due to did. some technical difficulties a few times, but they, they still reached their goals mm -hmm. and everything. But uh, they had, uh, I was asking him about it, and he pulled out this box with like their pre-production copy of everything. And he was showing me all the bits and pieces and the yep. sturdy cardboard little things that they got. So cool, right? Oh my goodness, I was just drooling over it. I was like, man, for everything you have about this game, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of you know, looking forward to it, yeah. but how, how many years is it gonna take for you to produce all this? And he looked at me and said, oh no, no, it's, it's coming out early, you know, next year, yeah. early next year. Like, how are you what? doing that? So, we invested and did all of the prefab up front oh, wow. for all the pre-painted minis, all of this other stuff, all the sculpts. Awesome. We did all of that before we even started the Kickstarter because we were you know let's invest in this so we don't have the problem where you know Kickstarter everyone's excited then everyone forgets about it and when it finally arrives you're like oh yeah I remember this game I'll just put it on my shelf so we want to continue the excitement yep. so they have the coming out soon enough like six to eight months right so the, the excitement, excitement will, will yeah, still the, be there the excitement yeah, yeah. will still be there and they're it's just going to continue through the year with Gen Con and as they show yep. more stuff yeah so um, wow. Yeah, they accidentally made me even more excited for Heroes yeah. of Lancey and Air. So that, that was one of my big, that was my, I think, my biggest excitement thing. I, I would audience. agree with that because yeah. I think that game is going to be their knock it out of the park game. I think so too, from even what I've seen. My favorite of the tiny stuff is the galaxies. I oh, just I've heard love, good things about that love one. galaxies. Yeah. Yeah. But man, this is a big board game. And huge. It's, it's huge. Amazing table presence. Yeah, yeah. It just I looks fantastic. Wait. And if the gameplay matches what I'm, it seems like it yep. does, I'm. this is the one I think I'm looking forward to most. Yep, I'm with you. Next year, I think yep. it's high, high on my list. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Low on my list is um, table... Cloth. Table cloth. <laughs> after, after being away from home at first and getting five hours of sleep for seven days straight, <laughs> the brain does not come is not as witty. Not as witty. No. I agree. Oh, you know the other game I was talking about? They had a prototype for uh -huh. a game called um, 
zero hour from split second games. And the neat thing about this game mm -hmm. is that it's a Jay Little game. You may know him from a little game, X Wing. <laughs> it's a total survivor game. Okay. So you're you're on the cusp of the, I think you're on the cusp of the virus. And you're trying to stop it before the zombie virus goes Ooh, oh. worldwide. So you're stopping off at cities and you're it's a dice chucker and push your luck. Cool. Really. So you're placing dice. It's got a lot of dice placement icons and tons of different dice with stuff. You're putting not. Um, you're rolling numbers basically uh -huh. to achieve things in each city. Zero hour. Zero hour. Another so it's not on Kickstarter right now. It will be, I think, in the fall. But uh, I got a, I got a chance to play it, um, and they sent me a prototype to, to play around with. Very cool. And Jay Little is a good friend, so I wanted to give him a shout out. So excellent. All right. How about you? Anything else? Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, the trick taking game. Yeah, right? that's what I was going to oh, talk about. Yes. Um, tournament at Camelot. Camelot. That's it. Yeah, apparently it's been out for a little while. Yeah, I think so. It's Whiz Kids, right? Yeah, Whiz Kids. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, and um, Scott Morris was playing mm -hmm. with us last night, yep. and he said something that I actually have heard other people say about earlier in the week. It is the most, it's the least Whiz Kids. Oh. It is the least Whiz Kidian. It is. <laughs> here's the outtakes. <laughs> Here they come. It's the least Whiz Kidsian game yeah. they've ever, ever played, played from Whiz Kids. I absolutely agree. Yeah, walk yeah. us through how, how it works. So you have these oversized cards, which yes. is neat already. Yeah, the nice um, big tarot but cards. But you've got your standard trick taking things, you follow suit and so forth. Mm -hmm. But. Everybody has these player powers, and then what are the other cards? The um, they were gifts. Um, they were gifts of the gods. Divine, inter divine, inter yeah. divine intervention, or they, they were called something else, but they were like that. They were, and yeah, yeah. Throughout the game, those could get added to you for more power. Yeah, they, this whole deck of extra crazy yeah. overpowered special yeah. abilities, and it, they were needed because you could get wiped out in one turn. Because you, basically, the tricks are battles. Right. right. It's a tournament it's at a Camelot. Tournament. Yep. They should have named it that. They should have. That would have been perfect, right? And so you're just, and there's cards that are in the same suit, but they might have poison attached to them. Yes. So, so of course, yeah. You'd that. get point, negative points at the end of your, whoever captures those tricks, right? Yeah. And which it would be bad. And then there's people who reverse the, the, the battle into being low or high versus yes. who would yeah. win it. Because since it's a battle, the you don't want to take the tricks. Because that's how much right. the, the card the, the cards have numbers and the suits like every trick taking game, but every card you take is five points of damage. Unless they're poisoned, then it's ten points of damage. Right. And whoever has the lowest card in the trick takes it. Right. So you do not want to be taking the tricks. Of course, some people can have a special power. They, oops, I have an ability to flip it, so the highest card's going to take it. And if that's they're paired up, right? Doubles or whatever, and they flip over? Oh, yes. And then if two cards with the same number are played, those are still in the, the trick, but they're not counted, counted when you determine who takes the trick. So you can throw out a couple of really low cards. Right. If you know someone else has that same card, they're going to play it. You don't have to worry about it. And it's just... And you could team up against people too without, like, if somebody plays like a 14 mm -hmm. and I played a two, well, I'm going to win. And then you played a two. Oh, guess who wins? Yes, oh, the next person <laughs> on the totem pole. Sorry. It's pretty awesome. For a trick taping, taking game, this this game we started out, we're like, okay, yeah, we yeah. figured out the rules. You know, and then the players were, the powers were introduced. Just then the poisons. And then right. the divine intervention. Then, and it was just a layer upon layer. And everything that was added as we were learning it, we're like, Oh my goodness. And by the end, it did not even feel like a trick taking game anymore. Exactly. It was amazing. Yeah. And the other cool thing is if you can't follow suit, your card is shamed. Oh, yes. It's and kicked removed. out. It's, <laughs> yeah, you're out of that trick. But I think it should be required. Everybody has to go shame. I, I think it might be in the rule book. Okay. Well, it better be because. It better be because <laughs> Sam, that's Sam Healy taught yeah. us to play. For sure. And it was so epically fun. Yes. I, I already ordered it. <laughs> yeah, it was that good. I went back yes, to my hotel yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, bye now. Yes, Ooh. yeah, it really good, really good, so really good. good. Man, it was so good. And before that, I would say my favorite trick taking game was probably Skull King, but now it's been it's up at that level. Yeah, I liked it better. Yeah. It is a little it, more complex. It is more complex, so it won't be as accessible. So yeah, not as that. accessible exactly. Um, but, but I oh, loved it. And the yes. artwork on it. Oh, we talk about that. The artwork oh. is amazing. It this has the really what would you call it like. I, the pre-Renaissance. Pre-Renaissance. Yeah, it's yeah. a pre-Renaissance artistic look mm -hmm. to it, and it's really neat. Really cool. Looks like the old mosaics and, and things. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. I love um, like Scott Morris's his character had the ability to switch who would win. Yeah. So if he played the poison, 
And you, oh, I played a 15. Now I get it. <laughs> in this game, now just one last thing. Yeah, it, it, it can be brutal. Everybody starts with 400 hit points. Yep. And you're like, 400 hit points? Oh, this game is going to take forever. forever. I took 270 damage Damn. in one, one round. round. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then we got Scott Morris down to like 10. <laughs> and then, no, 10. 15. And, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. He, was at, he was at 35, 35 hit points, that's what it and was. I got a Divine Intervention card that said, you can play this at any time, automatically just deal 25 damage to someone. And boom! Yeah, so, so Scott was like, well, I'm down to 35 hit points. Like, no, Not Scott, anymore. you're down to 10. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> it was great. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. The game Very good one. so good. Very and it wasn't even like a big thing at the convention, but no, I think no. it was one of the ones I had the most fun with. <laughs> yeah, and I heard, yeah, it didn't have the buzz, but right. I did hear multiple people Top, mention yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, so definitely one to check out. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Anything else that you really stood out for you? Oh, we have to talk about the game from you guys, from Passport. Oh. The Citadel, uh, help Professor. Me. Professor. They gave, they gave it a, a nice short, they gave name. a nice short name. Uh, hey, Professor Evil, colon, colon, and the Citadel, Citadel of Time. Time. That's it. I will let you, want, okay, you speak so about this, this whatever game, you want to say. It definitely has a bit of a doctor, Kill Dr. Lucky feel to it, just okay. a little bit. Um, especially in the, the look and maybe even a bit of a clue feel to it from okay. the look of the board. I can see that. But that's not what the game is. It's a cooperative game where um, Dr. Evil. Professor Evil. Pro Professor Evil. Professor Evil. Professor Evil. Professor, he doesn't sorry, have his doctor. No doctor. So he's stolen artifacts through time and uh, he's trying to stash them while you are trying to get them back. Rescue them. Rescue yeah. them. And there's a whole clock mechanism that happens in the middle of the board, but you all work co um, cooperatively to get those artifacts back and unlock doors, turn off security items, mm -hmm. and you know collectively say, okay, now we can get that last item. Yeah, there's you know, traps and everything. Traps and you everything. need to turn off uh, every single instance of a trap right. of every type that matches the artifact you're trying to save. And there's player powers that really yeah. add to a lot of stuff. So yeah. I so really enjoyed it. You got the demo? Yeah, it? I did. Cool. And um, I'm going to be, Randy and I are going to be taking a look at that one Cool, as well. cool. So. Yeah, I don't want to come, you know, I don't want to advertise ah, a passport yes, game. But, but it was, I really liked it. Yeah. It, so the one thing I will say about that that mm -hmm. I was very pleased about yeah. is that uh, you know we demoed it all week, and um, every single demo that was done mm -hmm. uh, that I saw I was kind of keep a track of every yeah. single demo that was done they ended up playing the full game. It wasn't like okay I see how this game so works and then leaving. They, they played, played through the, the whole thing. thing. Yeah, and absolutely, I, I, and it plays. Yeah. Like we played it like 30, 40, 45 minutes maybe yeah. with with rules. Yeah, yeah. Um, it plays pretty quick, and it came down to the wire. Oh, it every was, time. We yeah. were three and three, and we just got the fourth one right before he did. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. Yeah. So I got to play with Derek from the Dice Tower on that one, and that was oh, really excellent. fun. Cool. So, and then every night, you know, has been full of gaming and, and just hanging out with people, and that's just why I like doing this so much. It's really just kind of boils down to all the different people and hanging out with Chaz and stuff like that. It's so cool. Cool. I hope to come back again because this was high on my list. is really fun, right? Because it... it Gen Con is great, right? It's a great place to network, it, but I never get to play games. It's an experience It's an to experience. Have. This is a place to go and mm -hmm. be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Origins, yeah. There's a reason why uh, I think this is my favorite one. Yeah, so. it's right up there for sure. All right. So all we have now is 363 days until the next That's Origins. Right. So far away. <laughs> so, until then, though, we'll continue making videos. Yep, and absolutely. And all the other media stuff that we can do. Until then... I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, joined by my good friend Mark Street. That's right, from Board Game Corner. Board Game Corner. Thanks for watching. Yes, and we will talk to you again soon. Yep, thanks guys. Bye. 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 Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.